radicals and rational exponents. So we will see the square root of a real number, nth root of a real number, and rational exponents. Square root of a real number. So here, the square root of x equal to a means a squared is equal to x. So uh, the square of any real number is positive, so that x has to be positive, or we say non-negative. Non-negative means positive or zero. So x should be positive or bigger, uh, or bigger than z or equal to zero, and a is the same way. Now let's look at some examples. The square root of 144 is 12 because 12 squared is 144. And uh, we have the same thing uh, for the fractions. The square root of 20, 200, uh, 25 over 9 is 5 over 3 because 5 over 3 squared is equal to 5 over, uh, 5 over 3 squared is equal to 25 over 9. And uh, we want this uh, 5 over, we want this to be, okay, this is also bigger than 0. So there is a common mistake. I mean, some mistake. Some students do this mistake here. This is a mistake. Okay. So it says like square root 9 is equal to plus minus 3. It's definitely wrong. This is square root 9 is equal to 3. It's always positive. Okay. It's always positive. Now, uh, we cannot put any negative number here because if you take a negative number, it will be not a real number and it will be undefined. So no negative number is allowed inside. So if, if we allow it, it's not a real number. Okay, let's see how to simplify square root of x squared. Now, uh, no matter what x is, x can be anything here. The square root of x squared is always absolute value of x. So x can be any real number here. Okay, and this x, okay, you will see this is explaining why when we, I mean, when we solve this one, why we end up with x equal to plus minus 3, because here we take the square root of both sides so it makes square root 9, which is 3. So we get absolute value of x is equal to 3. So in this case, x will be plus or minus 3. Okay? So it's not because of this. Okay, this is not true. Now, let's try to simplify uh, the following expressions. Okay, 9x squared, it's clearly uh, square of 3x. So then we have to write it as the absolute value of 3x. Now this here, the this is the square of 9m squared. So which, okay, you can check. It's 9 m squared so it's absolute value but if it's uh, since m is real number so you can write it as 9 m squared now when it comes to here let's look at here so it's uh, is it a square let's check is it a square of something we can write this one as negative 5 squared cubed the square cubed squared so when you take the square root this is equal to this is equal to negative 5 cubed, its absolute value. So it will be plus 125. Now, is this a complete square? Okay, this is u minus 2 squared. You can check it. Or you can try to factor it. You will see it's this, the u, it's u minus 2 squared. So we have square u, we have square root. So the answer is the absolute value of u minus 2. So again, uh, the common mistake, I want to warn you about the common mistake. Okay, be careful here. Be careful. Take the square root. So this is absolute value of x. 
So some people do it this way. No, it's not true. The Torah thing is this one here. Okay, let's simplify the following uh, square root. So it's 5a squared. So it's the absolute value of 5a. So when you come to here, when you look at here, this is 4x minus 1 squared. No, 2x minus 1 squared, sorry. So this is then the square root of 2x minus 1 squared is the absolute value of 2x minus 1. Now, cube root of a real number. The cube root of a real number is uh, defined this way. The cube root, root of x is equal to a if a cubed is equal to x. So here, uh, surprisingly, a can be, x can be negative. So look at here. The cube root of negative 8 is equal to negative 2 because a negative 2 cubed is equal to minus 8. So we have negative 2 cubed is equal to minus 8 of okay, negative 8. You can write here negative cube root of negative 8 is equal to negative 2. It's because, okay, this happens, the negative, uh, we, we can have negative numbers because of the uh, power here the power is 3 so cube root 3 it's odd so if it is odd then we will have negative numbers now when we simplify it, it it's uh, cube root of x cube is x now x can be here negative okay let's look at those um, simplifying cube roots uh, as we see this is negative 3 written here so it's negative 3 cubed so this is negative 3 cubed this one here negative 3 cubed so 3 and 3 here so you're taking the cube root of a cube so it will be equal to negative 3 so you will apply this one now the same thing applies here the first thing you have to see is this one is equal to the cube of negative 5 over 5 and negative uh, 1 over 5 and when you take the cube root, it's negative 1 over 5. And when you come to here, this is cube, and this is cube root. So you can directly say it's x. It's uh, the inside. What is the inside? It's 1 minus x. So for x, for 3, you can do this maybe. Now let's see the end root of uh, a real number, what it is. So we define it the same way. Uh, so the end root of x is equal to a, uh, if and only if a to the end is equal to x. And here we take n is bigger than 2. And x is a real number, but it, might, it will depend on n. So if n is even here, so if n is even here, uh, x and a should be non-negative. So non-negative means positive or 0. Uh, look at here, this uh, 16, uh, the fourth root of 16 is equal to 2 because 2 to the fourth is equal to 16. And if you try to do it with negative, this is undefined because this is an even number. So even, even index, a radical with even index does not accept a negative number. It should be non-negative. But for uh, if the n is odd, then x a can be anything. It can be negative, positive. So here the fifth the fifth root of 32 is equal to two because two to the fifth is equal to 32. And here uh, fifth root of negative 32 is negative two because negative two to the fifth is equal to negative 32. So as you see, it accepts negative numbers here, positive numbers. But here, if it is 4, I mean, we, we, it is 4. For the even numbers, it has to be non-negative. You know, for the square root, we had the same issue. For cube root, uh, this is cube root was something like this. You know, we had negatives and positives. 
but here uh, it's for the even case the, it was like square root okay it doesn't it just has to be bigger than or equal to zero and the x here can be anything okay let's look at some notations and terms uh, so we say f root of x and here n we call it the index of the radical and x the inside we call it the radicant and uh, this sign here is the radical sign and uh, okay for two we do not write two here okay we do not use two but indeed it's two okay so when you see this one this is a square root we say it but it's the second root of x now uh, we will see how to simplify this uh, look uh, if n is even then we have this absolute value so the n okay here n here n n is even and we have absolute value of x now if n is odd okay this is rakam zauji this is rakam fardi okay if it is fardi if it is odd then you can do this but for even it's if it is even you cannot do this i mean if you can do uh, if you will do it you have to write the absolute value sign here now let's simplify those uh, theoretical expressions. Assume we will assume x is any real number. Of course, we will assume x is always a real number. Okay, um, for this one, uh, first we have to write this one as a fourth power of something, if possible, so that you can apply the rule and say this is equal to the absolute value. Now let's see. Uh, this is indeed 2 to the 4th, so this is indeed square root, uh, so 16 is 2 to the 4th, x to the 4th, so you can write here as 2x to the 4th, you know, by using the properties of uh, exponentials. So when you have 4 and 4 here, so it's an even number, so you can say it's the absolute value of 2x, and you can take, if it's a product and it's a positive number, you can take it out, so we have... The answer two times absolute value of x. Now for the other number, okay, this is uh, we see this is odd and odd. They're same, so this is x. Now what about this one here? Uh, first, uh, we have to write this one as the fourth, if possible. We have to write it as the fourth power of uh, some number here. So first x to the eight. So x to the eight is uh, it, can it be written as the fourth power of something? Yes. So it's x uh, squared to the fourth power. So you can write it this way. Now a to one. So a to one is what? A to one is uh, if you do the prime factorization of it, you will get three three three, and uh, you end up with three to the fourth power. So this will be then three to the fourth. Okay, then I can write this one here as uh, 81x to the 8 is equal to 3 to the 4th times x squared to the 4th. Then, by using the exponential property, 3x squared 4th power. So then, it's even number, so I will end up with the absolute value of 3x squared, and this is a real number, this is all positive, so it will be 3x squared. Now, you will see this uh, here. Okay, I wanted to explain you in detail. And for the other problem, we have 6 here, uh, 6 and 6 here, uh, it's even number, so indeed it gives us uh, the absolute value of x plus 3. So this is uh, x plus 3, 6 power, 6 power, it's even, 
So we say the absolute value here. Okay. We have a product and quotient rules uh, for radicals. And the first rule is this one. You can, if you have a product here, you can distribute the radical sign. You can separate them with radical sign. Uh, here, for example, uh, square root 80, you can write it as 16 times 5. And then by using this rule, you can separate them by using the uh, radical signs. And then 2, this is 4. Square root 16 is 4. And 4 squared 5. So it ends up, okay, no need to write it twice. So you can write it as 4 squared 5. Now, the other rule is... <clears throat> Uh, this one here, if you have a fraction, you can distribute the uh, radical signs to the numerator and the denominator. Let's see an example of it. Sometimes, you know, uh, in using this property, sometimes we do it this way, or sometimes we use it this way. So it depends on the question, and it depends on what you want to do and w w which one is useful. So here... Uh, this is given to us, so uh, we want to do some cancellation. These are same. So if they are same, we can bring them under the same radical sign. So I'm going this way now. So I'm going this way. So then I can do the simplification here. This is like 1 over 8. And then I go this way again. I separate them. This becomes 1. This becomes 2. And I have the answer 102. Okay, uh, here, one important thing here is, okay, you will not see it much, but if someone is curious about this, I want to tell. And the rules above is true if uh, the nth root and b and nth root of b are real numbers. So, for example, if you want to apply this rule to negative uh, numbers here, like 1 times negative 1, so what does it become? It's right. So this is plus one. You end up with one, right? But if you want to use the rule here, what happens? What is this? Is it one? No. So you cannot use this rule if you are using negative numbers here. So I mean, this is not real. And this is not real number. Okay, so for this reason, you cannot use this rule. So if you use the rule, and if you get real numbers here, not real numbers here, you cannot use the rule. Now, we will see how to simplify the nth root of... Uh, an integer, uh, a positive integer. Now here, the, the key idea is to write this one, if possible, write a as a uh, as the product of a nth power of a number and another number. Okay, um, let's look at this example, 48. So 48, so we uh, first we have to see if it is possible to write the fourth power of something inside. So if you don't know how to, if you don't see how to do it, like you can do it with the prime factorization. You can do it this one, 24, and do this one, 12, and do 6. Divide each time you divide, and at the end you divide by 3. When, when you got your stop here, okay? And then this becomes 2 to the 4th. This is 3, so you it, it is equal to 2 to the 4th times 3. So you can use this and now after this one so it seems like 48 is equal to 2 to the fourth times 3 like in here you see now then you use you break uh, this one you separate them with the radical sign you can distribute the radical sign to both and this becomes 2 and we don't touch this one so we cannot do anything about it its value, the the uh, the fourth root of this value, uh, three. It's uh, it's a decimal number. You, you know, if you if you want to really know the decimal representation, it's decimal 
uh, present representation uh, can be found by a calculator. Okay, the calculator will give you what it is uh, approximately, but we will not calculate its decimal representation. So we are interested in its precise value. So we write cube root, uh, the fourth root of three. Now, uh, another example is this one here. This, uh, we have three and we have eight, how to simplify this. So first you have to write this one as a cube of something times another thing. So we have to write these two things here, cube and cube. So how to break it? Uh, we can break this one as x to the six and x squared. And why six? Because six is a multiple of uh, three. So I can write this one as 2 third power x squared. So if I break it this way, then I can do the simplification. So as you see here, this is, we can break them, we can separate them. When you separate them, this 3 and 3, we have 3 and 3 here. So you can automatically say this is indeed x squared. Okay, this is x squared. This is cube root of x squared. Okay, let's see how to uh, simplify these expressions. Again, the key idea here is uh, to write, okay, by first you look at the degree here. I mean, the, the index, it's two here. So you have to write this one as the square of something times another thing, if possible. If there's nothing, it's just one, it's okay. But it's not a, a complete square, we know it. So what should we write? So the best thing here we can do is to separate it as m to the 8, m to the 1st, so that I can write this one as 4, m to the 4th squared times m, and then now we have the complete square inside, and then this will be m for square, and then square root of m. So this will be m to the fourth times square root of m. So here the it's absolute value, but this is fourth power of a real number, so it will be positive. So I'm erasing uh, the absolute value. So this is. Now, let's look at this problem here. This is 3, and the, the main problem here is how to write this one as um, the third power of something and then another thing. So the first thing you, may, you might want to see is uh, 24. Okay, 24 is 2, 12, 2, 12, uh, 6, and 2. Uh, a three and a three, so this is this turns out to be two cubed three. Okay, now we have. Okay, first let's write this one now as negative two cubed times three times x to the fifth. So uh, x to the fifth, it's bigger than five, so we can break it, it into pieces like that. And you can bring this cubes here. And the rest here. And since we have negative here, the negative is, uh, the cube of negative is negative. So you can, or negative one cubed is negative. So you can write, you can merge them. And you can write them as negative two x cubed because negative cubed was negative, so you can take this one as a cube of negative. So this has to be then negative 2x cubed to 3x squared. So then now you can take the cube root of it. Cube root. 
and separate them. When you separate, this is negative 2x, and the other will be cube root of 3x squared. Can we do further job here? No, because we have three, we have one here, two here, so the powers are less, uh, less than the index, so we end up with this answer here. Okay, here also you can see uh, the solution here. And uh, okay, if you want to see my solution again, you can play back and why you can. Okay, then, yeah, here is the answer. Okay. Uh, one other thing is only like radicals can be added uh, or subtracted. What do we mean by like radicals? Okay, now look at this expression here. Look at look at this expression here. Uh, what are the like radicals here? Like radicals. So the like radicals are here the same uh, radical. So the the terms of the same radical sign the index. And they inside will be same. So the radicals are same. So these are like terms. If they are like terms, you can add them. So when you add them, add these two, you got one square three, four square three. Like it's like one apple plus four apple makes five apple. So when you look at here again, these are the like terms. So it's like uh, like terms are these. So this is not like term because the index is not same as you see. So we write them as, you can write them as common factor here. So you can write common factor. So this is the common factor of these two expressions. You can say y minus four times this plus the other one. Now let's use this in this problems here. Let's simplify this expression square root uh, 50 minus 200. Okay, now let's write the first one as 25 times 2. So this is 5 squared times 2. This is 5 squared times 2. Like this is a 10 squared times 2. You know, the, the usual thing, this is 25 times 2. You know, this is 5 squared, 2. And then we can separate, and this will be 5 squared, 2. And you can do the same thing here. So you will get these two. And then you can subtract them. Like It's like five apples minus 10 apples. So how many apples we get? It's minus five apples. Now let's look at this one here. Now we, we don't touch this one. And here is the problem. If we have five here, so is it uh, possible to write this one as the fifth power of something and some other thing? Okay, uh, if we don't have any idea for, of course, this Z1, so this Z will be definitely on this part. Uh, 64 is what? 64? Okay, let's try to do it. Okay, I will get so, some more too. So you got here 2 to 6. So this will be, I mean, you can write this one, 2 to the 6 times z. So is it possible to break this into uh, some power of 5? So I say 2 to the 5, 2 to the 5th, times 2 to the 1st, times z. So here, this turns out to be the 5th power, and this is the other number here. So you take so the 5th root, you take the 5th root, of, okay, you can directly separate. So this will be 2, and this will be 2z. Okay, the fifth root of 2z. So we will end up with this. And we will use the same idea here. But of course here, okay, there's a, okay, here, you can write this one as z to the fifth times z times 2, so you can 
separate them this way. So this will be z and then two fifth root of two z. Anyway, so when you do them, you will get this. Okay, this looks very complicated, but let's see what's next. Now this one here is uh, two. This is two z then, okay? And this is z. And this, we don't touch this one. We cannot simplify. Okay, we end up with 2z times this and 2z times this one. So they're like terms. They're like terms here, like radicals. And we check their coefficients. 2z, 2z. So they are same. So they are same. That their difference is equal to zero. Now, okay, uh, you can try to solve this one. Okay, let me try this is square root of 28. So I have to write this 28 as something squared times something. So you can try to do, you know, the prime factorization here, but you know, you can see this one is two squared times seven. So it's four times seven. So when you take the square root, you will end up with Two squared seven. Now, what about 175? 175. Um, I don't know. It's prime factorization. Maybe I can try that. Divide by five. It will be five. Divide by five. Seven. Seven divided by seven. It's one. So 175. The prime factorization of 175 is 5 squared 7. Then you take the square root of both. It's a multiplication, by the way. Don't, for, don't forget. So don't do such thing here. This is not true. You can do it if this is multiplication, guys. Okay. Now, when you do this, uh, you know, simplification, you will end up with uh, 5, 5, square root 7. So this is like 2 square root 7 minus 5 square root 7. And this will, we will end up with 8 of 3 square root 7. But if you don't know how to see this, I mean, you can do this like common factor, common factor. And that's square root 7 times 2 minus 5. So we end up with negative 3 square root 7. Okay, you can write it here. Okay, uh, let's see how to rationalize the denominators. Uh, to rationalize the denominator is to multiply and divide the fraction with an appropriate number to make the denominator into. So our goal is this, you know, our goal is this to make the denominator uh, integer so we, we want to make the denominator denominator is makam makam in kesser okay free kesser now look at here this is one over square two and we want to make this one okay want to do want to make square two integer but the question is how so the best way is to multiply it with square root 2. So if I multiply with square root 2, it will get 2. But if I only do this, don't do, don't, don't write this one here, uh, the, the equality will not be true. So you have to, you should not change the value of the original terms here. So if you don't, you have to put square root 2, square root 2, so that they will cancel out 1, 1. So indeed, it preserves, you know, multiplying with them, it's it's like multiplying with one. So it doesn't change the answer here. It changes the appearance only. Surat, surat changes. You see surat? This surat changes. But mathematically, they are same. Square root two, square root two, two, one times square root two, square root two. So this is, this is how we make the integer. 
We change only the appearance. We change the appearance only. So it's something like this to make this one like three over six, you know, multiplying with three. So they are same, right? So we do it with the uh, radicals. Now, another way is this. Okay, sometimes we don't have this. Sometimes we have this type of uh, denominator, makam, this way. In this case, we have to find something so that when we multiply, it will give you an integer. So here, if you have such thing, a radical, a radical, and integer, a radical, radical, whatever. So you have minus here, you put plus. If it is minus, you put plus. If it is plus, you put minus. So you do the same thing here, so that it will be equal to one, okay? So you multiply them, when you multiply them, like let's do this. Square two times square two, two. Square two times one, square two. Negative one times square two, negative square two. Negative one times one, negative one. So they cancel out two minus one, which is equal to one. So this is equal to one. And this is when you do the multiplication, you will get square two plus one. Okay, we'll come to that again. So this is how to rationalize the denominator. So here, uh, this is chosen because we already know this is true. Okay, um, we will do some examples on this. Okay, let's solve some examples about rationalizing denominators. Uh, rationalize each denominator and simplify, and we will assume all the variables are positive numbers, so there's no problem inside the radicals. So the first one is uh, square root of 3 over n. So we can use the quotient property, so we can distribute the radical to both the numerator and the denominator. We have this one. So the best way, okay, now our goal is to change this one to n. So how can we do it? So the best way is to multiply it with square root of n. So we will do it to both the numerator and the denominator. So it's obviously square root of n times 3, square root 3. And you can put them together, and it will give you square root of 3n divided by n. Now, let's come to this question here. Uh, cube root of 7 over 4, so we can write, we can separate them again, and we want to get uh, this one uh, an integer here. So how can we get an integer? Okay, we should multiply with something so that it will give us an integer. So this is, we will try to find this one. Okay, now the best thing, first, uh, we can write this one as a power of something, if possible. So it's due to prime factorization. So prime factorization like 2, 2. So it will be 2 squared here. So the question is, okay, I should multiply with something so that I will multiply this with something so that it will be, give us uh, an integer here. Okay, the least number we can write here is, okay, we can write here uh, 2 cubed. Uh, how about making it, okay, 2 squared. How about making it 2 cubed? So if you multiply it with 2 to the first power, but of course inside the cube root, then we will get this one as cube root of 2 to the third power. So it will give us 2. So we will have an integer. So we will try to get a cube inside. So the best way is to multiply it with this one. Okay, now let's check how it goes. So we have this one. So if you multiply both sides with the, the cube root of 2, 
then we will get the integer part, I mean the, the numerator makam, uh, denominator makam as two. We can combine these two, so it will give us 14. So we are done because this is integer. Group. So we got this integer. It's okay. Now let's look at this problem here. The, uh, the square root of this and square root of this. Uh, you can approach in several ways. So let's see how it goes. Okay. Uh, you can write, okay, uh, you can write it this way, like square of something times something. So square, as we see, there's two square in it, four. And there's b cubed is b squared times b. So you can write it as like 2b, sorry. You can write it as like 2 squared and times b squared. So I'm trying to put the, uh, you know, the squares together so it, they will make the square and then take the square root so you take it out to b this is to b this is a b square root so since they're all positive numbers we don't put the absolute value we have to put the absolute value because it says all positive so we will not put to b uh, to the absolute value. Now, when it comes to you, as you see, this is the square of a, b. So we can separate them. Okay, then what's next? Uh, the next thing we should do is try to get rid of the square root in the denominator. So what should we do? Of course, we can multiply with uh, multiply and divide by square two, and we will end up with this two. And you can combine all of them, and then uh, it will be two, yeah, two a b together, and this two two they will cancel out, and we will have this one. Okay, now uh, in rationalizing denominator, sometimes we use this property. This property is just, again, it's a, uh, uh, it's the usual, you know, this one is x plus y times x minus y is equal to x squared minus y squared. So this is the famous uh, special product here. Uh, uh, instead of x, we can, if you put the square root of a, square root of a minus a squared b, and then we will end up with this, and it will give us a minus b. So we will use this uh, when doing the numerator when making it into an integer. Okay, for example, look at this expression here. How can you make this one uh, integer or, I mean, how can we get rid of the square roots here? So we want to get the square roots, so how can we do them? So the idea is, again, uh, to multiply with something. This, we have to multiply it with something so that will not have the square roots. So here, this gives the idea here. If you multiply square root of a plus b or a squared a minus squared b with uh, its counterpart, with the other uh, sign, with the opposite sign, it will give us a minus b, which, uh, which doesn't have any square root, no square root here. So, so the best option is then a, to use x square square root of x squared uh, five, make them add some minus make plus, and you do the same thing because you want it to be one here. You you don't want to change the value of this. Okay, so this has to be always one. The value has to be always one, so that when you multiply it one, the mathematical value, the precise value, does not change. So then you multiply. Then when you multiply this, you will end up with, okay, you can use this idea here. And then this one will be 3 times square root of x plus square root 5 divided by this one, x minus 5. So we rationalized it. Now, let's uh, look at the rational exponents of numbers. Okay. Now, first we define it this way. So n is bigger than 2, n is a positive integer, we say, or 
it might be also negative, but anyway. Uh, okay, we will see the negative case later. Uh, so negative is same, but first we have to understand this. N is bigger than 2. X to the 1 over n to power is equal to the nth root of x. So what does it imply? You know, the, this one here is uh, it, it, this condition on x changes. So, you know, n is odd and uh, n is even. So if n is odd, it can be anything. But if n is even, this has to be positive. So I will not say n is odd or even. I will say this formula works if it's a real number. Otherwise, it becomes undefined. Okay, let's check the examples here. The square uh, x to the one half is equal to square root of x or x bigger than zero because the square root of x accepts only positive numbers. And if x is negative, then this is undefined. So x to the one third is equal to cube root of x. Then this can be, x can be any number here, integer or positive, I mean, then negative or positive. So it's true for any real number. And here, this is the fourth root. Fourth root requires x to be positive because this is even number, so it ex accepts only positive numbers. But if you put a negative number and try to get its one-fourth power, it's undefined. So if you want to get this, definitely it's undefined. Now let's look at rational, uh, and let's look at fraction power. So if we will define this one as the nth power of x to the x to the one nth, one over n. So it means that this one here is equal to the nth power of the nth root of x. So we will define it this way. So let's see. Okay, again, uh, here the important part here is n. So n might be even or odd. So in each case, it changes. N odd, x everything. N even, only positive and zero. Or zero, okay? So because n even odd, it changes the, uh, the values of x that are to be accepted. So instead of saying n a even or odd, I will say as long as it's a real number, this formula works. Otherwise, it becomes undefined. Okay, let's check. Let's see some examples. The, uh, the 5 over 2. Uh, okay. 5 over 2 power of 2 is at 4 is, okay, uh, we can separate them this way. Then this becomes the square root 4. And this is 2, 2 to the fifth is 32. Negative, three, negative 8, 4 over 3. And here you can separate this like this one here. 4 over 3. It can be written as 1 over 3 times 4. Then what is this? This is the cube root of negative 8. Right? This cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So you write here negative 2. The fourth power is 16. Now, for example, this negative 4 uh, to this power. Now, you take the square root and square root, you cannot take the square root of negative 4. So it's automatically undefined. Now, uh, if you have such thing like 6 over 4, you have to write it in lowest terms first. So you have to do the simplification and write it to 3 over 2. And now 1 over 2 goes inside and you take, yeah, you write it as the square root of 25. And this is 5, so 5 cubed is 125. Now, uh, the rules of exponents work for rational exponents also. So if you multiply them, like with the same base, and you multiply, you add the powers like this here, so 2 to the 1, uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3, as you see, you can add them, it will give you 5 over 6. Now, if you have this case, you subtract, so 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3, if you do this, you will get 1 over 6, it's here. 
So if you have a number here, another number, you multiply, you get the other number, like two times eight of four. So it's negative two. And uh, you can, uh, if this is a multiplication here, you can distribute to the powers here. One over three, so you have one, you multiply, you multiply, you get one third power, eight power, so this is like the cube root of eight, and this is two, and this is a to one third. And uh, here a over b to the end, so you can separate them. I mean, you can distribute power, so it will be two to two third, a to two third, 27. You can calculate it, like it will be two, one third. So this is a cube root of eight. This is 2, so it becomes 2 squared. You can do the same thing for 27. So you get 27 cube root, so it's 3, so 3 squared, you will get this. And one other thing, if you have, uh, again, a negative number here, like 1 over negative of x to the 1 over 3, so you can write it 1 over x to 1 third. If you have negative, it makes it reciprocal again. So this is one other thing. Okay. Um, simplify each expression. Express your answer using only positive exponents. Assume that the variables are positive. Okay, then the first thing you can do is like you can distribute by multiplying. You can distribute by multiplying. So here, you know, 2 over 3 times 6. You can do this one here, negative 4. And you can write, multiply this, you will get negative 3. You can multiply these two, you get negative 2. And the next thing is you can multiply them, and you will end up with this. But it says uh, use only positive exponents. It means uh, write them. I mean, I, want, I don't want to see this negative here, so the best thing I can do is Okay, is to write it this way, 1 over x to the 6, 1 over y cubed, and if you do this, you will end up with y cubed over x to the 6, and this is how we get this one. Now, uh, this is, here is the other example. Okay, you can separate uh, and you can distribute. So you write here one, one, three, and then you can multiply them. So when you multiply, you get one over two here, and then three, one over two, one over two. two. So you can directly multiply them. Then this multiplication here, okay, looks 16 to one half. What is this? It's a square root 16, it's four, right? Now x to one half. So you multiply them, it will be three over two. And then you have this one two times one over three. Okay, three times one over three, it's one. So are we done yet? No, we are not done yet because they are not simplified. We have x's, we have y's here. What will we do? Now, we use this, 3 over 2 minus 2 over 3. Then 1 over 2 minus 1. We have this one. What is this? This is minus 1 over 2. And what is this? So you can say 3 times 3 and 3 times it's 9 over 6 minus uh, 4 over 6. So it will be 5 over 6. So we will end up with this becomes 5 over 6 and this becomes negative. But here negative means you can write it as the reciprocal. So it means 4 times x to the x to 1 sixth, 5 sixth, divided by y. So it's, this one is written as 1 over y to 1 half power. So then it will give us this. 
Now let's do the try and check. We will do this exactly the same thing. Uh, same thing. We only we will write the answer only with positive exponents. Okay, please stop the video and try to do it by yourself. Now I will do it. Now you can distribute by multiple, multiplying the powers. These are all multiplication. What, what do you get when you multiply these two? So minus two, minus one times two and minus two, and we get this one. So here's this one. When you do the multiplication, you will end up with six. Okay, this will be, again, you can do this uh, cancellation or simplification. You will end up with 4 over 3. 4 over 3. Then this will give us 2. So what's next? end up with this p to negative 2 over 3 times m to the fourth over 3 times okay you can if it is times you can uh, put them in this uh, in the numerator together okay then we have this what how can we do it we and this one here this we have minus here so this minus you can write it as 1 over p to the uh, p to the two thirds and then times m to negative 2 minus 4 over 3. Right? What's is negative 2 over 3? Negative 2 minus 4 over 3. We do this. Will be negative 10 over 3. Okay. And I can write this one as 1 over p two thirds and then m ten over three. This is the solution. Okay, and uh, one last thing, a reminder for the uh, conditions for simplified radical expression. So we say simplify it. So what what do we mean? Okay. For example, this is not simplified. Why? Because there's three here, there's four here. And here, this is in simplified form because there's one here and two here. So this index is bigger than the powers. So no power under radical sign should be bigger than the index. And the other thing is here, this is not in simplified form. This is in simplified form. Why? Because we don't want any radical in the denominator. The denominator always should be rationalized.